Okay, so the next result we need is uh, a lemma which allows us to localize in charts our smooth mappings and especially the mapping spaces. And uh, the lemma is as follows. So if we have M and N manifolds such that um, M is compact, note that this entails that M is a finite dimension manifold and uh, we have a locally convex space. Um, for a finite open cover, one u n of m, the map uh, which does the following. So we take a psi and we want to take smooth functions from m with values in n and uh, basically scatter these functions. So it's um, what do I mean by that? So I want to write this as c infinity functions from u i with values in n. And I want to send the f to the restriction f restricted to this open subset ui and i. So then the claim is that this is a homeomorphism onto a set which I call i. That's the image of the psi. And what is this image? This is a family of um, um, functions in this product. Uh, to n, such that if I compare these two functions on the intersection of two such sets, well, then they should be the same. I mean, obviously, if I restrict the mapping which is globally defined, and then on the overlap of these two sets, uh, they have to um, coincide. Um, so moreover, um, the set I is closed in the product okay, and note that this is a purely topological statement, so we uh, we don't have to worry about something like uh, before in this section we were always talking about mapping smooth mappings into an open subset of a locally convex space to make sense of all these things however here we are only dealing with topology and we have take uh, we've defined this compact open c infinity topology for uh, uh, smooth mappings between arbitrary manifolds so everything makes sense here we're not talking at the moment about differentiability of this uh, uh, of any maps okay um so let's see how we prove this. Um, it's for i and j in i and uh, x in the intersection to introduce the following um, maps, a variation in the point x with respect to i and j. So what I want to do here is um, I want to uh, take the whole product u i n i from 1 to n or perhaps let's give this another name so to not to have too many i uh, so let's say j k j k uh, j k right so distinguish it from the i and we want to be going into the cartesian part of n with itself and what this should be doing is, is so it takes gamma i, i from 1 to n, and sends it to gamma j evaluated in x, gamma k evaluated in x. And this makes sense since uh, the x lies in the intersection between these two open sets. Okay, and um, since uh, m is compact, um, the ui is locally compact when uh, the evaluation is continuous 
and uh, we see that also these new mappings fx jk basically they consist of variations and um and projections onto uh, onto subspaces so this is continuous okay uh denote now by uh, delta n this should be the subset sitting inside of the cartesian product in the diagonal so all elements which are of the form n n for the same n right uh, and the set is closed as n is Hausdorff. So if you have a Hausdorff topological space and you take the um, uh, you take the Cartesian product of this Hausdorff space with itself, then the diagonal is closed in the Cartesian product by the Hausdorff property. And um, then we see that uh, this set i we were interested in this is uh, the intersection of uh, take the pre-image under the diagonal the n with respect to the x j k um, evaluation maps and the x should be of course coming from uh, so i take j and k out of the I and I take all possibilities to intersect u j with u k. Okay, and since these guys here, the mappings are continuous, the diagonal is closed. What this means is, so we have a we have an intersect we have an infinite intersection of closed. Uh, so the pre-image of the closed sets is closed. We intersect lots of closed sets, so this stays closed. So this means that this is closed in uh, the product of the C infinity spaces. Okay, so this is the closed uh, condition, which which one can prove in that way. Um, so note uh, that the restriction. of uh, smooth maps to open sets is smooth and psi is thus well defined and obviously takes its image in this closed uh, set i okay um, okay moreover the mapping f when we send f to the restriction of the i uh, on ui we can also write this uh, or this mapping corresponds to uh, the mapping, uh, which is, uh, so if y yota i is the inclusion mapping of ui into m, then restriction is nothing other but the pullback with the yota i of the f. This is by definition f composed with yota i, or in other words, this is the same as f restricted to the ui. Okay, so, um, okay, and uh, we know, uh, or we have already seen, that pullback mappings are continuous. Um, when um, psi of f, so this is by definition f u i i from one to n is a continuous map. 
Okay. Clearly, also by the definition, the psi is injective. And um, surjective onto i, because smoothness is a uh, is a local property. You can test smoothness in in any open covering. It's the same as uh, testing continuity in an open covering. Um, and I mean, if you have uh, such a family f i in i, we know that um, each one of the fi is a smooth map from the ui with values in n and uh, we can define a smooth map f in uh, singularity from m to n uh, such that If I restrict f to ui, I get just fi. This makes sense because uh, a function in i, or the family of functions which lies in i, uh, is guaranteed to um, coincide on the on the overlap of uh, two of these domains ui with uj, right? So this uh, makes a well-defined map. Uh, and then if I take the psi of this map, I get just my family fi. Back. So this is uh, so we actually have a bijection or conti a continuous bijection onto uh, this um, onto this mapping i. Um, however, now comes the a little bit annoying part. Um, we uh, want to see now that psi is open. Oof. Okay. Um, okay, and, and this is unfortunately uh, again an argument where we need to be working with the sub-basic neighborhoods in the C infinity topology. Okay, so um, to this end, uh, define um, K U. Then let's give it an index. So this is this is now a new set. Uh, and we want we want with it is those are all the f in the c infinity functions from m to n such that if I take the iterative tangent map of f and apply this to k I end up in u so it's, it's basically a sub basic neighborhood but now for uh, a compact neighborhood in the iterated tangent bundle and U open in the iterated tangent bundle of n. Okay, and then obviously k is a natural number or zero. If it's zero, then we we just get the usual uh, compact open um, uh, <coughs> uh, sub basic neighbor for the compact open topology. Okay, um, okay. So we need to check. That finite intersections of such sets uh, um, get mapped to open sets by psi. Uh, since the topology is initial. In the vector space case, which we were treating earlier, it was, uh, we, had, we had these nicer mappings dk, right? But now we are in a manifold setting, so we have to take the tk, which are a bit more opaque, what is going on. Um, so with respect to the tk, okay. Right, and again, uh, we need a compactness argument uh, to make this happen. Okay, so let's let's see how we do this. Um, so, since M is compact, we um, uh, 
find open sets vi which are sitting inside of their closure and they the closure is sitting inside of the ui where one small i small n with the property that m is still covered by the vi and now since m is compact we see that also these closures um, so the vi closure is compact so we are basically finding compact neighbors which still cover everything uh, okay and let now f be something which lives inside of the finite intersection from 1 to l of these uh, a r u r l uh, and let us define t k r of v i hmm, like this so this should be uh, we have an iterated tangent bundle and this gives us a bundle projection onto the base we just collect i mean what this does is uh, let me draw you a picture here so uh, if this is our manifold m and then we have our compact set sitting inside here so this is the i r and then if we think of um, the <coughs> the uh, this iterated tangent bundle as being a manifold sitting over this base manifold m so that's basically if you've seen vector bundles that's sort of, uh, supposed to be a, a vector uh, that's supposed to be the vector bundle picture and what what we then get so we have this bundle projection pi k r and we are getting all of the stuff which sits inside of the iterated tangent bundle above our uh, above our compact set so note this is closed in uh, tkrm but not compact so if uh, if you go through this what what it uh, contains um, the fibers of this vector bundle and the fibers are vector spaces so there this is not compact uh, so okay here is the bundle projection by k r from t k r m down to m okay um right so what we have now is um, if we restrict the function to ui such uh, that we intersect the kr the t kr v prime so note this is a closed subset of a compact set when this is compact okay then we have uh, the so call it u r with the k r here let's assume uh, we have uh, such a gamma which when we restrict it is uh, contained in this here okay um, so this gamma is in here if and only if um, the original gamma was in intersection um, so it's missing the i here um, of k r u r k r. So what what's happening here? Well, what's morally going on? Um, I want to 
localize these compact sets kr so the compact sets kr they are sitting somewhere uh, in here in my iterated tangent bundle so this is the set kr this is compact then i intersect it with my closed set which was the black one so i get a compact subset and what is happening i i have these sets vi sitting downstairs and um, i take these stripes up in the uh, in the iterated tangent bundle and i'm dissecting my uh, compact set kr into pieces and what the only thing which is happening here is um, so i want to localize my uh, function gamma on these pieces ui which are part of the open covering however uh, uh so the gamma ui this sits inside of the smooth functions from ui with values in n now the kr is sitting in the tangent bundle or the iterated tangent bundle over m it's not necessarily localized uh, localized in a nice way such that um, it's compatible with uh, this partition into the ui i mean if i'm if i'm taking this so perhaps this is this would be what you get um, if you take the iterate tangent bundle of the ui and uh, i mean i've drawn it on purpose so there's a piece which I have here in red of the KR, which doesn't lie over the UI. And what this trick here is just doing, so we have now created some closed sets by which we can um, cut the KR into pieces, which makes sense uh, in something uh, compact um, in the iterate tangent bundle over this ui this is the point so these guys here uh, so the restriction of uh, the gamma to the ui this will always be a smooth function but the point is we want to localize these um, pieces here or these uh, these conditions so this is an open neighborhood in the c infinity functions from m to n and if I just uh, if I just look at say for example K R U R K R, this does not make sense. So this is not in any way um, contained at, the, uh, at least in general in or doesn't make sense as a subset of um, the smooth function from U I with values in N. However, these guys up here. We have here so this stuff because i localized it now and identified it with some compact subset inside of the ui um oops okay and that was, this was probably the reason why uh, okay let's now we see that we had two times ui so let's call these guys here perhaps O. do not get confused with the covering so these um these pieces here uh, in the definition have nothing to do with the, with the open covering. Okay, right. So um, the the whole uh, wash up of why we needed this was just um, uh, was just to show that we can localize these conditions in the compact open C infinity topology uh, with respect to the pieces. Okay. So this was quite a mouthful. Um, however, we are almost done. So this is this is a technicality, if you want, right? So we just needed to find a way of uh, localizing these uh, sub-basic neighbors as something which makes sense on the smaller open sets, and this is the way to do it. So we know that the TKR VI, so they cover uh, KR. Um, so uh, this is this is the reason why we have actually this equality here. And uh, what we conclude 
from this that the product i from 1 to n over the intersection 1 is 1 on r is 1 on l we have intersected this kr with the pkr bi bar or kr so this stuff lies inside psi of 1 r l and then we have kr or uh, kr okay and is a neighborhood of psi of f and the one we started with since f was an arbitrary element of um, the section kr or kr this guy we see that uh, this set gets mapped to an open set by our mapping psi. And this shows that the psi is open. This concludes the proof. So we have now uh, we have now uh, so open on its onto its image. We know the image that's fine. Okay, so this really shows that this uh, the scattering map, uh, which allows us to dissect a smooth mapping. Let's go back to the statement. So we have uh, we have this uh, map psi, which allows us to uh, cut a smooth map from M to N into uh, into a bunch of smaller pieces. This is a homeomorphism onto a closed subspace on the right hand side, and um, well. So this was the final technical piece we needed, and we can now finally go on to the exponential law. Um, and we have dealt with a lot of the technicalities which are making this proof very difficult. And uh, we can now reap the benefits and prove the exponential law. Um, however, before I, I will write down the exponential law now, but before I do this, let me briefly explain uh, so why is this called the exponential law well so functions from x to y are often denoted in the following notation, so we have y, and then you take it to the x power, right? And in the world of sets, the exponential law, so meaning sets without any additional structure, without continuity, without uh, without smoothness, in the world of sets, the exponential law is just the statement. that you can associate if you look at functions with values in functions so you look at z to the power of y so those are all the functions from y to z and then you're heaping one more power on top of it so you're looking at functions from x which take values in functions from y with values in z then the statement is that this is the same as z to the x times y right so the cartesian product and this looks like the usual rule for how you take x uh, how you take powers say for um, um, say for uh, say for real numbers or something and this is the source for this name exponential law Okay, but now let's state it again and then prove it. 
of the main theorem of the section. Statement is as follows. Let M be a compact manifold. O in E, an open subset. U in F, an open subset, where um, E and F are locally convex spaces. Um, then the following holds. If F from U times M with values in O is smooth, So is FV and U with various in C infinity uh, MO. Um, and FV is defined as before. I take it to X and Y. This is FX1. Okay. B. Um, the evaluation map with smooth functions with various in O times M over to O. And the map C infinity from M, uh, sorry, from U M doesn't actually matter, but okay, let's say notation O with C infinity functions from U with the values in the C infinity functions from M to O, sending F to F V is a bijection. And now let's finally prove this and see what we get from all our hard work. So since C infinity M O is an open subset of C infinity M E, we will now finally use, as was already announced in the first part, that um, uh, for the purpose of establishing smoothness, we may assume that O, or this open set, is actually the whole vector space, right? Because we, uh, we are using it smooth into the submanifold, if and only if it's smooth into uh, the vector space. Okay, now let's do this. So let's prove A. Uh, so we pick a finite atlas. Phi i u i so if we want to label it of M. This is possible because M is compact. And uh, the last lemma we proved equals three uh, yields a topological embedding with closed image and this is our scattering map psi now for this atlas. What it does it sends to D, of course, uh, F, of course, to F, and restricted to DUI. Okay. Uh, so we see the image of uh, Psi is a closed. Um, vector subspace of the locally convex space. Right. 
So the, we know already that these pieces here are locally convex spaces and products of locally convex spaces are again locally convex spaces. So, uh, and we have, uh, so we have the image of I, uh, well, let's call it again, uh, sorry, the, the image of Psi, let's call it again I as in the lemma before. Um, okay, so this is closed. Um, uh, thus, I is in particular sequentially closed. And okay, so we have a sequentially closed uh, sub uh, space. And then lemma 1 to 12 implies that. Um, F from U times M into O, C infinity, uh, or for such a map, the map uh, F wedge, uh, sorry, F V uh, from U to C infinity uh, M O will be smooth. If and only if for every uh, one small than i small than n, uh, the map which sends so we take x and u and send it to the following, we send it to f v of x. This is a smooth map from m to o. We restrict it to u i and get a smooth map from ui to e if this is smooth right and what we are doing here we are just using this trick if we have a differentiable map into a locally convex space which takes its image into in a sequentially closed uh, subspace and then lemma 1 to 12 tells us that smoothness uh, checking smoothness with respect to the sequentially closed subspace will be the same as checking smoothness into the larger space. And since the larger space is this, uh, is a product with a product topology, we can check it for every component uh, independently. And if it's true, then it's true for the whole product and then we get the smoothness we want. Okay. Um, apply our exercise to one, two. Um, to see that uh, this smoothness is equivalent to the smoothness of the mapping. Okay, again, we start a new send an x over to where f of v of x, then we have to restrict it to ui, and now we apply the chart phi i inverse first. So this is now a mapping on the space of C infinity functions phi i ui with values in e. Why do we want to do this? So the point is here that this is an open subset uh, in the modeling space of M. Uh, this is open in model space of M. Okay. And uh, for such a map, um, we already know that this is smooth. This was established in lemma two, two, one. Okay, so what, is, what has happened? We have said, okay, we want to check smoothness of this map FV into the smooth mappings from the manifold M with values in N. Then we applied first our scattering result. We were, we were sort of uh, cutting apart 
uh, the, the map in the image into smaller pieces. And the trick here was that our smaller pieces were defined on domains of charts for the, uh, for the underlying finite dimension manifold. Then we were using a few more tricks of, uh, in um, this infinite dimensional calculus and uh, reduced our problem to check smoothness uh, for a mapping into one of these restricted spaces of smooth maps. So into the space C infinity from UI with values in E. And by applying this, uh, this mapping or by taking the pullback with respect to the phi i inverse, we could then massage the whole uh, affair into a mapping which, which is defined on an open subset of um, the model space of the manifold with values in a locally convex space. So basically all we have been doing, so in the first uh, part we have proved that uh, the V maps um, are smooth when uh, the game plays on open subsets of locally convex spaces. Um, and all the work we have been doing up to this point was just to justify that we can reduce our more complicated problem on manifolds to something which can be locally checked in, uh, well, if you want, in charts uh, of the manifold. So we, we just reduced it to the case that we have an open subset. Okay, so this um, is, was part A. So we see that uh, this FV really is a smooth map into this uh, manifold of mappings. Okay. Um, Okay, let us now check that the evaluation mapping is the infinity functions m o times m with values in o is smooth since smoothness is a local property. Um, it suffices to check this in a neighborhood for any point fx. Note that since uh, since on the left hand side of the the component here on the left hand side the c infinity functions points in the c infinity functions are of course functions yeah. okay so uh, we pick an example point and let's see that uh, we can actually do this um, okay so we have our point pick now a chart phi u phi of uh, m such that the one point we want to check it is contained in the chart domain. Okay. Um, and define um, another evaluation map. Um, let's call this f phi. So this is the smooth functions, uh, this is defined on the smooth function from v with values in O, so v phi um, times v phi going over to O, uh, where v phi is, of course, the codomain of the chart, or in other words, phi of u phi. And I recall. Since our manifold M is compact, and this will be essential for the, uh, for the I mean, at, what we want is, uh, is that uh, the M is finite dimensional. So this V phi sits inside of some d-dimensional space, right? So in particular, it's locally compact. Um, so when we have this evaluation map, then we see the F, for some eta and z is given by the f phi of when we take the pullback uh, of the eta um, 
here we take the phi of z. Um, for uh, eta and z in z infinity m o and z n of course needs to come from u phi so that we can apply it. I mean let's just let's just check that this formula gives uh, any meaning. So what is this? This is eta composed with phi inverse, right? And uh, then we have the phi z. And so we have eta phi of this. And what this mapping is supposed to be doing, it just uh, is a composition. So we have eta of phi inverse. And then we evaluate this in phi of z. And this is eta of z by definition, or actually the same as on the left-hand side. So this formula actually gives it meaning. Uh, OK. Uh, note again that uh, this phi inverse pullback from C infinity functions, m o of C infinity functions on v phi, uh, with values in o, is the restriction of the continuous linear or in this case anthonymous uh, with smooth map uh, phi inverse pullback from c infinity me values in c infinity u phi e. So we are exploiting here that the O is an open subset of uh, this locally convex space. Okay. So what we see here, the variation will be smooth if the variation with this phi index is smooth, as we have our nice formula. Let's give this formula a name here. So let's call this formula star. Is smooth, um, smooth definitely by this formula star, right? Okay, uh, however, smoothness of uh, F phi was established already in proposition. So again, the whole argument for the smoothness of the variation map boils down to um, establish uh, an argument of why we can localize our problem again to um, the open subset of locally convex space or open subset of finite dimensional vector spaces um, case we have already dealt with. Okay, and now uh, the final part. Um, let us now check that uh, this mapping taking C infinity functions from U times M with values in O to C infinity functions from U with two C infinity functions on M with values in O. We take an F and send it to FV. On one hand, we have seen in part A that this mapping is actually well defined, right? So it makes sense. Uh, the, this mapping is bijective. Okay. Um, how do we do it? Obviously, F uh, or this mapping is injective. Right, so just for set reasons, let's uh, check search activity. Okay, so let let us assume we have a smooth map f from u taking values in this manifold C infinity from m to o. Uh, let us then. Construct 
another mapping, which lives on u times m. And what do we do? We go to see infinity m o times m, and we send u m to f of u and then n. Well, obviously, this mapping is smooth. Right? So we are just sandwiching together smooth mappings. And we can compose this with the evaluation. We get a smooth map, which we call F um, wedge. This is a mapping which is now u times m and goes into O by definition. And what it does, so it takes u m. First of all, it sends it to f u m. And afterwards, it evaluates. Or in other words, this is f u of m. OK. And by construction, this smooth map satisfies the defining relation we want. Namely, if we take f wedge and then take the adjoint map to f wedge, we get back the map we started with. And this establishes search activity. In a way, this uh, V and wedge operations, they are dual to each other. So if the exponential law holds, then we can go from a smooth mapping on uh, with values in the C infinity function to a smooth mapping on with two variables. And we can also go back. And uh, behind this, uh, the second piece of the exponential function, where how we get a smooth map uh, on uh, the Cartesian product uh, of the domains. This is basically the smoothness of the evaluation mapping, which is behind this, with a small argument we have here. Okay, and this concludes this uh, section on the exponential law. So we are finally uh, done with this exponential law. And uh, we will see in the rest of the lecture time and again that this exponential law is essential for um, basically everything we want to be doing later on.